Earlier today, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi slamming a delay in implementing a system that she said would automatically slow down trains. Well, I don't think we should have extended the deadline. I mean, the trains were still running. If, we, if you're going to extend the deadline, then stop the trains because the risk is there. A waste of time is something almost sinful to squander when we could be making a positive difference in lives of the American people, and this is, is one example. All right, this technology that automatically slows down a train uh, was something that was uh, implemented last year or called for last year after a Philadelphia train crash that killed eight people. On the phone with us right now, Russ Quimby. He's a former investigator for the National Transportation Safety Board. Russ, you heard that. I found it very surprising that uh, Ms. Pelosi leapt on that uh, as potentially avoiding this. And I just wonder, we, we don't know. Right? We don't know. Well, she's right to the very limited extent that had TTC been implemented fully, and there are several levels of, of this technology, that it would have prevented the accident. However, uh, she fails to understand that there's a lot more into this, uh, especially getting radio bandwidth and, and cost and things of that nature, getting interoperability between railroad systems. There's a lot more to it than simply saying, well, we should have done this a lot earlier and, uh, and those kind of things that politicians say. You know, there was another talk earlier as well about uh, infrastructure spending. Maybe we're not spending enough. All of these might be legitimate issues to your point. I just feel that we, without knowing what happened here, to assign blame on a lack of spending or uh, not having a right technology at the time, it just seems premature, but you're the expert. I'll defer to you. I, I do want to get a sense of, are you surprised that it wasn't worse? In other words, that there, there weren't more people hurt and or killed? Uh, to a certain extent, the, the, until they download the event recorder and really know what the train speed was coming into the station, uh, or, you know, I, I'd hate to conjecture on that, but... Uh, Trains are very resilient, and most of those people probably got injured who uh, got injured in secondary, uh, what we call secondary impacts, hitting other people, hitting right. uh, the seats, uh, uh, overhead racks, and things of that nature. Cars are designed. The Safety Board and the Federal Railroad Administration uh, got regulations passed. The impact it takes a crush on the end of a car is over a million pounds. The United States has some of the most crash-worthy railroad passenger cars in the world, and uh, they withstood an impact, in this case, I think very well, actually. Uh, if speed were an issue here, uh, this technology that would slow a train down, even though it's been approved and is coming to New Jersey, uh, this train didn't have it installed just yet. This technology does what? Refresh my memory. Well, it'll, it'll do at, at the top level. It'll determine where the train is, and if, it's, if the train is performing uh, according to the signal system and its location. So if this train had been coming in, even if uh, the engineer had fallen over from a, a stroke or a heart attack or something, it would have read the, 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 the uh, position of the train, and if no action had taken, it would have automatically put the brakes on and brought the train to a safe stop. At what point would it kick in, Russ? In other words, when you get close to the station, I mean, a lot of these along the Northeast Corridor can go up to 70, 80 miles an hour. When they're around more populated areas, they tend to slow down. What would it likely have been doing as it was approaching Hoboken? Well, these systems are customized to the actual railroad itself. So as it was coming through the yard into the, into the terminal in Hoboken, it would have slowed it, it, slowed it down appropriately to whatever speed it was supposed to be at at that location from the bumper post. You know, if it was uh, 20 miles an hour, a mile away, uh, down to zero when it comes to a stop at the station. Now, I understand you kind of touched on it, Russ, that trains have the equivalent of what a lot of air airplanes do, and that is like a black box. Can you tell me about that and what it might say here? Well, the event recorder that's going to be on this uh, train will probably be back in the locomotive and also in some uh, control cars like the engineer in this particular train. Uh, it logs in speed. It logs in power. It logs in if there's a cab signal system, it'll tell you what the signal system is saying. 
Uh, it'll tell you the brake functions, what the brake pipe pressure is, and uh, at what stage each of the brakes is on. It's it's quite detailed and go to a oh over 20 parameters, so it, it can tell a lot. Um, finally, about the the demand for this service, just this line alone takes 15,000 passengers back and forth uh, every day. Uh, obviously, those folks are going to have to find alternative means home. Certainly tonight, uh, they're working that out, but. It, does just heavy usage like that uh, have any effect? Generally, only on things that are physically uh, impacted by it, like wheels and rails and things like that. As far as the, as far as the electronics and things like that, uh, generally speaking, they can become outdated after a while, and you can have problems like uh, the Washington Area Metropolitan Transit Authority had problems with contactors and its signal system at one point because of their age. Hmm. That can become a, a, a function of age and, and, and wear, like I said, for wheels and rails. But generally speaking, and nothing lasts forever, but generally speaking, uh, what went on here uh, I don't think was probably related to an age problem. Russ Quimby, thank you very, very much. Uh, it's just wild. The whole thing is just wild. Thanks for the calm explanation. Russ Quimby, former NDSB railroad accident investigator. Uh,